Hello, Steve here, Statistics Fix. In this video, I'm going to try and repair this hairdryer without getting electrocuted. Okay, so this is a babyliss, babyliss, barbyliss, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's a hairdryer, 3Q. Uh, it's it's mine, well, it's not mine, uh, because I don't really have enough hair to necessitate a hairdryer, but it's it's ours. Uh, we've had it for quite a few years, and it's a good one, it wasn't cheap. Um, so it's basically stopped blowing hot air. Now, reading up online, it looks like the heating element might have gone, but this does appear to have a problem with with the switches, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, like I say, it wasn't it wasn't a cheap one. This, so it's worth having a look at it before I chuck it in the bin, because what's the worst that can happen apart from death? So let's plug it in, and I'll see if I can show you what what it's doing. Okay, so we're all plugged in. Now, when you switch it on. You're really not going to hear me over that, are you? I'll tell you before I switch it on. So basically, you switch it on, and this this button here is supposed to... That's for the cold air. So when it's little blue, it's it bypasses the heating element, I think, and it just blows cold air out. So when you... You should be able to click it off, but it doesn't appear to come off very easily anyway. I'll show you. It's kind of just rocking backwards and forwards. It's it's really difficult for you to to see what I'm talking about here. It it does click over, but then when you try and press it back, it's, there's a lot of resistance, and then it's just all spongy like that. It's, and now it's just spongy, and it's everywhere. So no matter what set, <laughs> no matter what setting you have it on, it's just cold. So there's obviously something wrong with it. Um, so I'm going to try and see see what see what I can do to try and fix it. Um, now obviously, I've never taken one of these apart before. Well, not obviously, but I've never taken one of these apart before. I'm not an expert. I'm a I'm a complete noob. Um, so wh whatever I do in this video, in fact, the first thing I'm going to do is unplug it. Right now it's unplugged. Um, yeah, please don't copy me. This is you know uh, this is not a how-to video. I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm just gonna have a look inside and I'm gonna see if there's anything obvious. It may just be something simple with the buttons. It may be the heating element. If it is the heating element, perhaps I can order a new one. So I'll um, I'll crack it open now and we'll uh, we'll take a look. Now looking at the the screws on this. They're a particularly strange screw, and I've worked out it's this this screwdriver that you need, which is I've got no idea what what that bit is called, but that's what you need. I've never used one of these before. I'm guessing it's like a security pit and you know they don't want you to take these apart now what do I do Does all of this back bit come off? I feel like there, should, there must be some more. Oh. There's an awful lot of dust inside it. Which is possibly the problem. But I'd like to be able to open it a little bit more. I 
So yeah, there's a lot of... Uh... Oh wow. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, it needs a good clean. There's a lot of hair inside it, surprisingly. So let's have a look at this switch and try and work out why. I mean, there you can see it's not... <coughs> it's not clicking into place. Where, you know, these give a satisfying click. That one doesn't. So how do I get to that? Okay, so it looks like we've got a big capacitor there, so I'm not going to touch that, because that's very possibly still got some... still got some power in it. There we go. Alright, so we got down to the... Right, I, I, I mean that, that wasn't clicking until I just did that. I basically forced it down and now it's clicking. I'm wondering whether it was just dirt inside here. In fact, I can feel the dust getting to the back of my throat. <clears throat> so I'm gonna get... I'm gonna get a brush and clean this out because it's minging. I'm guessing this part here is the LED. Yeah, it is. You know what, it still doesn't feel quite right, that. Is that actually broken? Do you know what, I think it has. Which is why when you push it back, not taking the switch with it, it's just sort of rocking on the top. Right, I want to know if I'm barking up the right tree or the wrong tree or someone else's tree. Um, now, I am going to plug this back in, I'm going to stay well clear of it. Now, in that position there, that is the cold air, is that on or off? I think that's off. And then I'm going to set that, that's the heat setting, so I'm going to put that in the middle and I'm going to put it on the middle power setting. Like I say, I'm going to stay well clear of it, I'm just going to plug it in now. I'm just going to see what it does. see the heating element inside heating up. And yet it's still blowing out cold air. So, I mean, I could be wrong, but if the heating element's bright red, to me that means that it's heating up. Um, so I think it must be something to do with this switch, that it's kind of stuck in the cold position. I can just test with my multimeter on these points at the back. See whether it's actually working or not. Right, there's continuity between the center and the right side of the switch there. And there's nothing between the center and the left. I'm going to switch it the other way. Okay. Yeah, the switch is working.
Right, so there's nothing wrong with the switch. It's just odd because the heating element is glowing bright red. Surely it wouldn't glow bright red unless it was hot. Something is overriding it. I can see a couple of screws here, which I'm hoping will bring everything out from inside this bit. Then I can have a good look at it. It's not immediately obvious, which is what I, I genuinely thought it would be when I took it apart. You know, the switch seems to be working fine. There doesn't appear to be any broken cables. There doesn't appear to be any damage inside. There's just a lot of dust, which, you know, I can imagine can cause some damage, but these things are... You know, surely they're meant to withstand sucking in dust. I don't think there's anything wrong with the switches. So I'm a little bit stuck now, to be honest. Don't really know where to take it from here. This is probably a stupid idea. I'm going to switch it on now. I just want to see if this heating element is working correctly. Can I do that? Or is this stupid? It's, it's, this is a heat resistant mat. Oh, I don't know. A little bit out of my comfort zone here. I'm doing it. Okay, I turned it off then because I could see it glowing red. And it is, it's hot. It's hot, so why is that not blowing that hot? The cold air that's coming in, as soon as it hits that heating element, surely it's then going to come out the other side hot. What could possibly stop that from happening? What is going on? I don't understand. Okay, so this is off the... This is off the back of the hairdryer, as you can see, I didn't notice this at first, but that's damaged. Which probably explains why there's so much dust inside it. Oops. So is it just because there was a lot of dust inside it? So the fan takes the air from the back, blows it through here, it passes over the heating element, it comes out the, at the end. Here. I mean, there's a lot of dust in it. Is it just that? It can't be, surely. Well, do you know what? Seeing as I can't see what's wrong with it, I'm now going to put it back together and I'm going to see if it's acting any differently with all of this dust and crud removed from it. Alright, I'm not putting it back together fully. Uh, I'm just going to test it now as it is. Uh, at least I'm not at risk of, uh, of any electric shocks now. So that's blowing cold air, as you would expect. Let's turn that off. Ah! 
and it's working fine. Wow. <laughs> so I have fixed it. Yeah, that's incredibly hot. I can only assume then that it was it was dust, it was crap blocking the exit. I don't but it was still blowing air, it was still blowing cold air. I don't know, but whatever I've done has remedied the problem and I haven't really done much. Ow, yeah, that's red hot. That's red, red hot. That's working absolutely fine. Wow. There seems to be a bit of a recurring theme with some of these videos. Um, the, what was it? The uh, Chromebook took it apart, put it back together again. It worked. Um, I'm sure it's happened with, with some other stuff as well. It's just, um, it's odd. Weird. So I'll put it fully back together. See if I can get this switch back on. I, I actually think the switch might be broken. Um, in which case I'll have to see what I can do. Um, but yeah, let's try and get, get it all back together. See if we can get that switch back in and uh, give it a, another test. And then fingers crossed it'll still be working. If you look at the little leg parts, for want of a better word, uh, one of them does appear to be snapped compared to the other um i don't know the only way i can think of is to um is to just glue this onto onto the switch and then it stays in the right position because at the minute it's rocking about it's got to be worth a try obviously don't want to do is um, is glue the switch in an open or closed position because that would be bad. I'm just going to leave that there for a bit to go off. Okay that seems to have set. So let's put everything back together. Okay so that's it fully back together. Let's see if it still works. Yes, it does. Right, well, it's now 100% working. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the problem was. There was a lot of dust and hair. Most of it's blown away while I've been testing it. You can still see some is, is scattered around the place. Um, this bit at the back was damaged. I can only assume it's sucking all this dust through. It's sucking all this hair through. And it's just clogged something up, whether it was a sensor or I don't know. But it's now working. How long it'll c carry on working for, I don't know. But once again, it's another video where if I hadn't have taken this apart and given it a bit of a clean, this would have just gone in the bin. And this cost, I think this was about 150 quid when we bought this. So, you know, it's not, it's not a cheap item. And rather than going out and spending another 150 or whatever on a new one, I've just spent, you know, 10, 15 minutes taking it apart, cleaning it, putting it back together, and it's now working. So I, apologies, this video is probably going to be quite boring. I'll, I'll put some cool music in it. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'll do something. Um, but... It's, you know, it's done. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you got any enjoyment from it whatsoever, uh, maybe it did help you. Sorry. I, I mean, I'm laughing, but, you know, if you've got one of these and it, it's doing exactly the same thing, take it apart. Make sure it's unplugged. Get yourself one of these screwdrivers. And, you know, it's, it's dead easy. It really is. So... Hopefully it's helped at least one other person. Um, 
So if that person is watching, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more Can I Fix It videos. Thank you. Goodbye.